Today, we're bowling for furniture, or bowling into furniture. We're making furniture out of a bowling alley. This is the after work garage. So as you can see, the garage has turned kind of into Santa's workshop this season. Making some projects for friends. Some legs for a little bench for my sister. Got what's going to become a pottery drying rack for a friend who does a lot of pottery. Got a walnut slab over there that I'm going to do something with. But today, we're here for this bowling alley lane. A while back, a bowling alley nearby closed down, and they were giving these things away for free. I have one there. It's upside down. And one here. Now, my plan is to turn part of this into a coffee table. Part of this into a coffee table. And then, out of the other half of this piece up here, turn it into an end bed bench for my sister. but we'll see. There's some challenges we're going to have to overcome. First of which is these holes that are drilled. We're going to have to do something with those. We're obviously going to need to refinish it. And the way these bowling alleys are constructed, they're actually built in place. So when they put in the bowling alley, they bring the boards in and toenail them all in sideways. Uh, one board next to the next board next to the next board so there's nothing really holding them together in this case there's these uh, reinforcement that kind of gives it support but we're going to need to do something so that when we cut these up the boards don't individually sag apart I'll show you what I'm talking about if you look here you'd think these are all glued together which they are a little bit but this board isn't even nailed in at all and this one's wiggling. So with them all joined together like that, we're going to have to provide some sort of support underneath so that it doesn't either sag or bow. Another point regarding the construction of these bowling alleys is that the first five feet or so is solid maple. And that is where the ball is going to first impact since it's a harder wood. But as we get over here, the remainder of the lane, all the way down, imagine it would continue, there would be other sections, is made out of pine. Here's the fingered section where the uh, maple here and the pine there are interleaved. So looking at these holes, how I'm going to deal with this, I plan to drill out the hole. It's about a half inch hole and then glue in a dowel, pound a dowel in there, glue it in, and then cut it flush, and that should give it a nice uh, contrasted look. Since this is a reclaimed piece of wood, it's not going to hide the hole, it's actually going to accent it and uh, provide a flush base for the surface of the table. Not the prettiest, but hopefully it'll sand down okay.
All right, well, we let that dry a little bit before I sand it down. I'm gonna plan out how I'm gonna utilize this uh, piece of wood and the lines that I'm gonna cut on. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have here. From this second line right here, up to these series of X's, that seam, which I don't think I'm gonna have to cut with a circular saw. I think I'm just gonna separate those boards out and see if that gives us a clean enough edge. That's gonna be an all pine coffee table. And then over here, from this line here, where the, the second line, the farthest left line, from where the pine and maple start to join together, up to that series of X's, we're gonna have an all maple coffee table. Now, I originally didn't really want to have this one hanging design there, but given the width of the bench that I'm going to use, make out of the remainder of the wood, I think that's going to be the best option. So speaking to that, from this line to these X's to that edge, it's going to be an all maple end bench. That's 58 inches long. Since a queen bed is about 60 inches wide, that makes it about the appropriate length. While the glue is still drying here, I think I'm just going to make these rips across with a circular saw. And since there's a whole bunch of nails in there, I've, I'm using a demolition slash framing blade, which isn't probably going to give me the cleanest cut, but that'll be cleaned up later with some sanding uh, when I finish the whole thing. But it's definitely going to be able to deal with the soft steel of those nails, given that it has a carbide tip blade on it. If you're wondering what happened there, I hit a nail on sideways and it kind of got wrapped around this one. I made it through. This one kind of bound up the saw a little bit. But as you can see, these boards aren't really held together with anything. So you can clearly see the need to reinforce it. Put something on the bottom here to reinforce it. Fun story for you here. So I beat and pried and jiggled to separate these boards apart, the whole while forgetting that they were screwed to an iron bar on the underside. I'm an idiot. Mm -hmm. I'm an idiot. So I'm actually okay with what's going on here. Uh, with these metal supports. I like them, but they're not screwed into every board, not that they need to be, but since I'm splitting these up into two pieces, I want to make sure each piece is secured to the piece of metal at least a little bit. So this X here, I've transcribed the joint that I want to split onto the other side of this piece of wood. Um, for that one, it didn't matter because that's going to become a coffee table. The other piece it uh, has yet to find a use. But for this one, it's all maple. I wanna make sure I save both pieces because one's gonna become a bench and the other is gonna become a coffee table. So for example here, I had to take out that screw, but these pieces aren't very well supported until you get to the next screw. So I think what I'm gonna do is drill a few holes, put in a few of my own screws, and then make this cut here in this piece of metal, make this cut here, where is it? Here. And then separate them. That way they're both going to be stabilized. 
Oh, I measured, by the way, and that bar is crooked. My cut is not. I was a little worried there for a second. So to further help stabilize these boards, I think what I'm gonna do is I have this uh, just laminated plywood. I'm gonna glue it on and screw it down to each of the boards. Now that's not gonna give it much structural strength. It already kind of has that. But it's gonna help each of the boards uh, not move independently from the one next to it. And that's important for weather because when we get a nice smooth sanded surface on top, we don't want it expanding, contracting, sagging, and then you start to get the individual feel of each of these boards. Instead, what I want is a nice smooth surface that stays like that. So I'm gonna cut this piece down and put a couple strips on each of these and glue it as well as screw it and hopefully that'll help each board move with the other boards. So the idea is that they're gonna sit kinda of like this. This is gonna be the bench and this is gonna be a coffee table and I'm gonna glue these down, screw them in, but first I'm gonna real quick prepare this surface so that uh, these can glue down to it a little nicer. With the support boards in place, it was time to separate the maple section into the piece that would become the coffee table and the piece that would become the bench. Now this proved to be a lot more challenging than separating the pine boards because they were glued together with some kind of construction adhesive that was very tacky but also extremely tenacious. And yes, this time I cut the metal bars on the bottom before I started. Well, let me show you. I'm using the piece of bed frame to try to pry this apart, but it is not wanting to come. They're glued together and there's a whole bunch of nails, just like with the pine section, except this is maple, so it's harder to pull them all out at once, and boy, it's a struggle. I don't know if this is a real observation or not, but it looks like these nails in this pine wood are normal, what you think of as nails. The nails over here they use to, uh, in this maple section, are different. They have these twisties on them. Not totally sure if that was intentional or if that's because of the change in the wood, but I just thought that was interesting. I hope you enjoyed this first part, taking a look at breaking down and stabilizing reclaimed bowling alley wood uh, to get ready to make it into some furniture. In part two, we're going to sand and finish these tops and then look at making some legs and attaching them to the table and benches. So until then, I'll catch you next time on the After Work Garage.